Our scripture reading for today comes from one place in the Bible, Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 11. Ezekiel 48, 11. It shall be for the priests who are sanctified of the sons of Zadok, who have kept my charge, who did not go astray when the sons of Israel went astray as the Levites went astray. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that wonderful praise. Uh, I believe that God was glorified, and uh, certainly we are in the Christmas season. You can see the decorations, and also uh, we are looking forward to uh, the Victory Day at Yeoju and the book launching of uh, the History of Redemption series, uh, the 11th volume, and so we need your prayers. Uh, we ask that you continue to pray so that uh, the book could really come out, and through that book, May many people be able to be renewed and restored and be able to be lifted up high. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Uh, today we're going to continue our study from uh, yesterday and from the weeks before. And so our study today is the Ezekiel Temple and the Zadokite Priesthood. So the... Ezekiel Temple. Uh, we're going to really dig into the Word today. So I'm just going to warn you, we're going to uh, study and look up verses. So it's going to be maybe a, a solid 30 to 40 minute study. So brace yourself. I'm just warning you beforehand. So the Ezekiel Temple and the Zadokite Priesthood. So uh, we just read the main passage, uh, Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 11. Uh, the first thing that uh, we need to know is that when God establishes covenant with His people, uh, it's a promise uh, concerning the women's seed and also concerning the land and descendants. There are three things that uh, are present uh, within that covenant. Uh, with the covenant, there is the visible temple. The visible temple. And we could say this is uh, the altar. And this is the place of worship. And if you have a temple, then you need to have uh, workers. You need to have priests who work in that temple. And so you have to have priests who work in that temple. And those priests offer up sacrifices on behalf of the people. We've studied that. So there are sacrifices. So here, uh, as God establishes the eternal covenant with... Uh, Ezekiel and also Jeremiah, the New Covenant, uh, they deal with the same covenant. Uh, God showed Ezekiel the eternal temple, and he also made mention, God acknowledged that only the Zadokite priesthood would be able to work in the temple. Uh, so the sons of Zadok, or we can say the descendants of Zadok. So the Zadokite priesthood would be able to uh, only work in the temple. And so uh, we uh, have to understand uh, this uh, genealogy of the priesthood. And through that priesthood, uh, we understand how God worked in each generation and how uh, the Zadokites were acknowledged by God. Only the Zadokites. And so we have to be like those Zadokites, the sons of Zadok, who were working in the Ezekiel temple. And so we need to go uh, and cover the genealogy of the high priest. And so to give you an overview, I'm going to give you an overview. In the Old Testament, uh, we, we covered this before. Uh, there were three uh, temp visible temples.
So divide that up into three. Uh, and from the New Test, uh, from the Old Testament, uh, there are 29 uh, recorded high priests. 29. 29 generations of high priests. And this is from Aaron to Jethua. Uh, the passage we can look up is 1 Chronicles chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. And also Nehemiah uh, chapter 12, verse 10, 11, and 22. So there are uh, 29 generations uh, that are recorded in the Bible. And as we said, uh, these priests work in the temple. And so there is Moses' temple. So there's 10 generations in Moses' temple, which is the tabernacle. And then there are 13 generations in uh, Solomon's temple. And then there are uh, six generations in the Zerubbabel temple. Zerubbabel. So 10, 13, and 6. But we're going to focus on here. Uh, so uh, the Moses' tabernacle, if you date it, it's from 1445 B.C. to uh, 959 B.C. And then in the Solomon's temple is from 959 B.C. to... It's destruction, which is 586 B.C. And then, as they made the return, uh, in the Zerubbabel Temple, it started from 515 to 320 B.C. So, these are the uh, three temple, visible temples in the Old Testament. So, the first one is Moses' Tabernacle. And that's what we're focusing on today. And then, uh, we go into the Solomon's Temple. And then Zerubbabel Temple, because the Solomon's Temple was destroyed in 586 in the third uh, deportation to, uh, to Babylon. And so as we focus on uh, the ten generations, uh, we trace it back. We go to Jacob, Levi, and then after uh, Levi, we have Aaron as the first high priest. So if you look at Exodus chapter 40, verse 13, uh, he becomes a high priest. And so make another chart. Uh, this is very important. Running out of ink here. Okay, so... Okay, so there's uh, from the second, which Aaron is the first, then we go into the second, third, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the eleventh gen generation high priest is Zadok here. Zadok. And then from Zadok, we go into the Zadokite priesthood. Zadokite priesthood. So you can make your chart like this. Uh, from the second generation, who, who was after Aaron? It was Aaron's, out of the four sons, it was Eliezer. Uh, our general secretary, uh, Joyce's son's name is Eliezer. It means God's help. Uh, so Eliezer. Uh, but 
At that time, uh, we'll go over it in detail. Eliezer also had a younger brother, Ithamar, right? And so here, Ithamar, uh, we have two uh, lines of the priesthood, but uh, we'll study, uh, you know, the flow. Where did uh, the flow of the priesthood go? And then after Eliezer is Phinehas. And then after Phinehas, we, we, we learned the 77 generations, right? 77 generations. We Remember that song? Uh, maybe not. Okay. And then Abishua. Abishua. Huki. Usi. And then uh, Zerah. Haya, Haya, and then Merariot, Merariot, and then uh, Amariah, and Ahitu, Ahitu, yeah, thank you. So here uh, we have the generation. So. And then from Ithamar's line, we have to uh, make note that uh, from Ithamar's line, uh, Eli the high priest came into the priesthood. Uh, we'll look at that later. So Eli. And Eli had... Uh, uh, two sons, and they were Hophni and Phineas, right? And Phineas had two sons. I don't know if you knew that, but it was Ichabod and Ahitub. Don't confuse Ahitub with the Ahitub from Eliezer's line. Ahitub. And then we have um, Ahimelech. Ahimelech, and then Ahimelech's uh, son is Abiathar. Abiathar. So here we have uh, the uh, two lines, and uh, we'll, we'll study that uh, in general. And so let's go and look at uh, Exodus chapter 40, verse 13, as the first, as the first, uh, uh, high priest Aaron. So turn to Exodus chapter 40, verse uh, 13. Okay, let's read that together. Ready, begin. And you shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him that he may minister uh, as a priest to me. So, uh, first of all, We'll look at generations uh, one through three. Generations. And the first one is Aaron, as we said. And Aaron became a high priest in 1445 BC when the tabernacle was set up. So 1445. And you can look at the verses Exodus chapter 40, verse 2, and also 17. We also just read Exodus 40, verse 13. And so Aaron was the first uh, high priest. Uh, but as you know, um, Aaron has uh, four sons. So let's look at his sons. Uh, Eliezer becomes the uh, high priest, but let's look at his sons. So Nadab, Abihu, and then Eliezer. And Ithamar. Ithamar. And so these four sons uh, served as uh, priests with Aaron as they were living together. So this was a, a priestly family. Uh, so if you look at some verses here. Uh, numbers 3, uh, 4. Numbers 20, verse 28. Uh, also we'll look at... Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 6. And then also we need to look at uh, Leviticus 
chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. So write down those verses. Uh, so let, let's go, uh, let's say them together. First of all, Aaron, Eliezer, Phineas, Abishua, Buki, Uzi, Zechariah, Merariath, Amaziah, Ahitub, and Zadok. And uh, so here we are looking at uh, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. So now here, this is where it divides. So there are four sons, but what happens? Nadab and Abihu uh, become killed by God because they offered up strange fire. This is in Leviticus chapter 10, verses 1 through 2. And this word strange is the Hebrew word zur. So zur. And zur means uh, outside. It means Gentile. And it also means it has the meaning of harlotry, or we can say idolatry. So this word zur, it's strange fire. But this strange fire means outside fire, outside. So it's not according to God's regulations. Uh, or Gentile fire, it's like perhaps they uh, copied the pattern of uh, paganistic or hedonistic worship. So it was like Gentile, you know, maybe following their patterns. But also, it also means harlotry and idolatry, something that has nothing to do with God. So this word is zur. And so uh, because of that strange fire, God kills Nadab and Abi, uh, Abihu. And so uh, we are left with Eleazar and Ithamar. So that passage in Le Leviticus chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, we'll look that up. Uh, and then also make note of 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 11, verses 3 and 4, and James 4, 4. So write those verses down, and then we'll take a look at these uh, important passages. So first of all, let's look at Leviticus 10, 1 through 2, and then we'll look up uh, these other verses. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. If we can read that. Uh, have you found it? Can you say amen? Okay, we found it. Uh, let's read it together. Ready? Begin. Now Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took their respective fire pans, and after putting fire in them, placed incense on it, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. And fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. So, uh, we, the thing that we have to be uh, very aware of and be careful is that we have to offer up worship that is uh, in God's way and worship that uh, is pleasing to God. And so worship is not something to play around. Worship is something that we uh, approach God through our worship and He comes to meet us. Of course, it's all by His grace. We cannot approach Him, but... Through the blood of Jesus, we can go into the new and living way uh, and approach God by faith. And so we have to worship in a way that is pleasing to God. And if we worship in a wrong way, we can actually become cursed or God be can become displeased with that. Just like Cain and Abel. Uh, let's also look at uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 4. And uh, why don't we read this out loud all together? Ready, begin. Are you there? Okay, maybe not. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3 and 4. I said, yeah, we were going to read a lot of uh, passages. So 2 Corinthians 
chapter 11, verse 3 and 4. Ready, begin. But I am afraid, lest as the servant deceived Eve by his craftiness, your mind should be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion of, to Christ. For if one comes and preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully. So this uh, different or other, different gospel, different spirit, and it's a different Jesus. And so uh, it looks good. It seems like uh, it's uh, the gospel, but it's a different spirit. It's different doctrine. Uh, it's talking about different Jesus than what is actually the truth. So we need to worship in spirit and in truth. Truth. John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. So our worship needs to be based on the word of God. What is the purpose of the worship? The purpose of worship is to receive the word. But if you go to other churches, the main focus seems to be not the word of God, but it seems to be something else, whether it's the fellowship or whether it's the praise or prayer. But the first thing that we need to uh, realize is that worship is for receiving the word of God, receiving the word of God. And so in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 through 9, it says, if you uh, exalt wisdom, and if you embrace wisdom, then wisdom will exalt you. So we always have to have the word as the center of our worship. Praise prepares our hearts to receive the word. And once we receive the word, through that word, we pray on the basis of that word, and we receive answers. And so John chapter 15 verse 7 says, uh, if my words abide in you, and, my, uh, and you abide in me, then ask whatever you wish. And according to whatever you ask, it will be done for you. But this is based on the word. The word must be present. Even when we pray, well, we don't just pray. We go over a verse, and you know the senior pastor says, always pray according to the word. And we look over a one, one verse or two verses, and we pray according to that word. And so our worship needs to be centered on the word. Senior pastor always emphasized that our, the preaching of the word needs to be on the highest level. On the highest level. If you look at the Ezekiel temple, the, um, uh, the holiest of holies, uh, the sanctuary is in the highest place. You keep on going up and up and up. And it's on the highest place. And so I pray that you and I, we always uh, embrace the word and lift up the word and may that word exalt you. Once you do that, he will exalt you in your workplace, in your careers, in your church life, in all of your areas of life. I believe that God will exalt you and raise you above all of the nations. And I pray and blesses upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Uh, we won't go through these verses because, you know, we know the story. So we'll just forego looking up these passages. But these passages just show you that uh, outside of uh, Nadab and Abihu, Eliezer and Ithamar were left. But uh, it was not Ithamar, but it was Eliezer who took the priesthood. And so you can l look up these passages. And it was Eliezer. So the God's uh, will flowed through Eliezer. Of course, Ithamar was a priest, but the priesthood was with the line of Eliezer. That's what we need to understand. So I pray that you may be able to always hold on to God's will. Amen. So secondly, uh, we'll look at uh, generations from 4 through 10. So Abishua, Buki, Uzi, uh, Zehariah, Meharayot, Amaziah, Ahitub, and Zadok. We'll look at those and uh, we'll try to come to a conclusion. And so, the second point will go through from the fourth to the ten 
uh, generations of the priests. Uh, the one thing that we need to understand, and that's where the sixth book is very important. You need to read the sixth book with the Ezekiel uh, 11th book because it's very intertwined all together. And so if you look at uh, the sixth book or if you look at Josephus, Flavius Josephus, uh, he wrote uh, about the uh, uh, genealogy of the priest. Uh, and the Bible also uh, acknowledges this, but somehow, somehow, the priesthood changed from the time of Uzi, uh, after Uzi, to Eli or Eli. So, and we know that uh, Eli played a, a very prominent role in the time of the judges. So, the Bible doesn't really say exactly what happened, exactly, but the priesthood changed from the line of Eleazar to the line of Ithamar. So Eli or Eli is a direct descendant of who? Ithamar, which was the fourth son of uh, Aaron. And so we don't know uh, exactly what happened, uh, but uh, we can uh, make a good educated guess uh, because in Eli's time, if you look at the name Merariath, so Merariath, so the priesthood changed, the priesthood changed uh, to uh, Eli, or Eli, uh, descendant of Ithamar, descendant of Ithamar. Uh, if we look at the name Merariath, so Merariath, Merariath, uh, and so in Hebrew, uh, Merariath, his name means treason, and it also means betray. So here. Merariot, so Merariot, Merariot, uh, his name means treason and uh, betray. So something happened in this area, in this, uh, in this period, where uh, Zehariah, Zehariah name, would name his son Merariot, which means to betray and to, uh, it means treason, treason. So we don't know exactly what happened, but uh, anyways, we can see that uh, something happened that upset God, and he put the priesthood to Eli, or Eli, who was a descendant of uh, Ithamar. And, but, however, if we study this line, uh, Eli had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. And they were, uh, ruth they were like rascals. They were like... Uh, uh, like kind of like gangsters. They were like sons. They were like PKs, you know, PK, pastor's kids. But they, were, they didn't have faith, and they would bully the people. Uh, they would use their authority and their, you know, position. Uh, and God uh, uh, put judgment on them. And eventually, we see that Hophni, Phinehas, uh, they were all killed and uh, and also Eli on the day, the battle of uh, Aphek, which was 1102, 1102 BC. In the battle of Aphek, we see Eli dies as well. So God is pronouncing his judgment on uh, the family of Eli. And uh, it, the Bible says because Eli did not control his sons. And his sons were ruthless. And then Phineas has two sons. And Ichabod. And he, uh, Ichabod means the glory has depart departed, right? Ichabod. Uh, and so uh, we see that in the time of uh, Samuel and in the time of the judges, that uh, there was uh, corruption in the leadership. Corruption in the leadership. And so, uh, however, Ichabod has a brother, Ahitu. And Ahitub has a son, Ahimelech, and Ahimelech has uh, a son, Abiathar. 
And these people were serving in the time of Saul and also uh, in the time of David. So we need to look up uh, a couple of passages. 1 Samuel uh, chapter 21, uh, verses 1 uh, and 9, especially 1 and 9. And also 22, verse 18, 20, and 23. Uh, and also... Um, uh, you need to look up a couple more passages, but these uh, will give you a little uh, backstory of what, uh, what happened in that time. And so, first of all, uh, let's look at 1 Samuel uh, chapter 4, verse 19, 21. So, 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 19 and 21, and then also 14, uh, verse 3. So let's look up these passages first. 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 19 through 21. And 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 3. And then 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse uh, 11. So we'll look up these three passages. And then we'll see what happened in the time of uh, Eli and his sons. So 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 19 through 21. First Samuel chapter 4, uh, verse 19 through 21. Uh, I'll read it for you. Now his daughter-in-law, Phineas' wife, was pregnant and about to give birth. And when she heard news that the ark of God was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband had died, she kneeled down and gave birth from her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the woman who stood by her said to her, do not be afraid, for you have given birth to a son, but she did not answer or pay attention. And she called the boy, what was the name? Ichabod, saying, The glory has departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken and because her father-in-law and her husband. So here God pronounced judgment. And Ichabod means uh, the glory has uh, departed. 1 Samuel chapter 14 uh, verse 3, let's read that. Uh, Ichabod, uh, it doesn't say here, uh, it doesn't say here, but later we find that Ichabod actually has a brother already. The brother was already born, and his name is uh, Ahitub. So 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 3, let's read it together. Ready, begin. And Ahijah, the son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phineas, the son of Eli, the priest of the Lord at Shiloh, was wearing an ephod, and the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. So this verse shows that Ichabod had a brother, and Ichabod's brother was who? Ahitub, Ahitub, Ahitub. Let's look up the last, um, 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 11. First Samuel chapter 22, verse 11. Uh, I'll read it for you. Then the king sent someone to summon Ahimelech, the priest, the son of who? Ahitub. And all of his father's households, the priests who were in Nob, and all of them came to the king. So Ahimelech uh, was a priest, and he was the son of Ahitub, but not this Ahitub. Don't get that uh, confused. And uh, so here we see that um, uh, the priesthood changed to Eli, the descendant of Ithamar, but then God pronounced uh, judgment on uh, the family of Eli because of their unfaithfulness and because uh, they were sinning at the temple, at the temple. Uh, as a reference, I forgot to make a passage here in Exodus chapter 25. Uh, verse 7 through 13. Uh, here uh, we, we learn about Phineas, Phineas. I forgot to make that note. So uh, just write it down. Number, uh, Numbers 25, 7 through 13, sorry. Numbers 25. And this talks about Phineas. Numbers but uh, we know the story of Phineas, so uh, we can skip over that. So here, 
uh, we see uh, that uh, the line of Eli continued, uh, but we see that there was judgment that kept on pouring upon that family. Uh, let's also look at uh, 1 Samuel 21, verses 1 through 9, 1 Samuel 22, verse 18, 20, and 23. And here we see that there are um, two priests that are active in the time of David. The two priests in, are Zadok and also Abiathar. But before David becomes king, uh, we see that these two lines are very faithful. Zadok and Ahimelech uh, were faithful to uh, David. And so you remember the story when David was running away from Saul? So when did David run away from Saul? 1020 B.C. to 1010 B.C. And the third place that David ran away was Nob, right? But what happened at Nob? David came to Nob and the priest there was Ahimelech. And so Ahimelech was uh, serving at Nob where the tabernacle was. And uh, he said, you know, he gave him food and he gave him the sword. But he didn't realize that David was running away from Saul. And then uh, he was running uh, away. And then he saw this happening that the priest Ahimelech was helping uh, David. Uh, who saw that? Doeg. Doeg saw that and he tattletailed. He reported this to Saul. And so Saul tells Doeg, go kill all of the priests. And 85 priests were killed at Nob. 85 priests. And even their families and children were massacred. But the amazing thing is, uh, there was a per person who ran away. And the person who survived out of all of that massacre was Abiathar, by the grace of God. God uh, spared Abiathar in his providence. And so we can see this uh, big event happened. And so uh, because of that, uh, David was so thankful to Abiathar that for 10 years that uh, David protected and he took Abiathar as a priest. And so this is very important for us to know. So... Uh, let's look up 1 Samuel chapter 21, uh, verse 1. Let's just read verse 1. Let's read that together. Ready, begin. Then David came to Nob to Ahimelech the priest. And Ahimelech came trembling to meet David and said to him, Why are you alone and no one with you? So we just explained that situation, right? And so uh, Ahimelech does not even know what it is. Because Nob is, you know, away from the main city, Jerusalem. Right? Uh, the tabernacle moved from Shiloh to uh, Nob and then from Nob to Gibeon. And so it was th th during that process. And so let's read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 9. 9. Let's read that together. Ready, begin. Then the priest said, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, behold, it is wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you would take it for yourself, take it. For there is no one ex other except it here. And David said, there is none like it. Give it to me. Um, so here uh, he receives um, rations and then also food. But then let's go to verse 18. Uh, 18. Ready, begin. Then the king said to Doeg, uh, you t oh, uh, 22 verse 18, right? Ready, begin. Then the king said to Doeg, you turn around and attack the priest. And Doeg the Edomite turned around and attacked the priest. And he killed that day 85 men who wore the linen uh, ephod. So here we see the Edomites again uh, trying to cut off the priesthood. So how many priests were slaughtered? 85 priests. 85 priests. Uh, and so we just read verse 18. This is a tragedy. This is a to to massacre uh, the Lord's anointed and priests. This was the uh, act of evil, the act of the devil himself. And so let's read verse twenty. Keep going. Verse twenty, uh, twenty-two. Verse twenty. Ready. Begin. But one son of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. So there's all of this drama, you know. 
So you have to read, uh, to be honest, you have to read like the sixth book, you have to read the ninth book, you have to read the, uh, you know, all of those books, the fifth book, and it, it all becomes like intertwined. You have to read the third book to understand David's, you know, flight of refuge. All of, the, all of those books come into like uh, a, one big drama and story. And so once you read all of the books at least seven times, right, each, each, uh, then all of these stories will become more clear and connected to each other. So all of this is based on the, you know, the second book, the third book, the fourth, fifth book, uh, the sixth book, and so on and so on. It's all connected. And we can see the story. Uh, we, you know, we probably heard things for the first time today, how all of these things connected, right? And how the priesthood and the temple are connected and all of the stories that are interwoven with each other. And the uh, founding pastor, Dr. Reverend Abraham Park, he laid out these uh, uh, History of Redemption series volumes so that we can understand the Bible better. Amen. I hope that, you, that through this, you can understand the Bible better. Amen. So, uh, as I uh, repeat, we are studying the genealogy of high priest because we understand the spiritual flow. Where God's will and where God's blessings rested upon. And we have to hold on to that will. We have... No matter who it is, we have to cut off our human uh, opinions and our, our human uh, thoughts, uh, our human uh, judgments. And even though that person is close to me, we have to cut that off and we have to hold on to God's will. That's the important thing. So if you make a wrong choice, then you, may be able, uh, you might be able to be cut off from the blessings of God in the same way because you made a wrong judgment. And so here we see that um, Abiathar runs and he escapes to tell uh, David. Let's read uh, one more uh, verse here. First uh, Samuel 22, verse 23. Let's keep going. Ready, begin. Stay with me. Do not be afraid, who, for he who seeks my life seeks your life, for you are safe with me. Now, um, if you go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 23, 9, write it down. 1 Samuel uh, 23, 9. 1 Samuel uh, chapter 23, verse 9. And then also, if you look at 1 Samuel 30, verse 7, David takes care of uh, Abiathar. I'll read 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 9. Now David knew that Saul was plotting evil against him. So he said to Abiathar the priest, uh, bring the ephod here. So here, uh, David is still fleeing from uh, Saul. It's, he hadn't become king yet, but uh, he's, uh, he put Abiathar as a, uh, as a priest for him. And then 1 Samuel 30 verse 7. Uh, I'll read it for you. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, please bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So here uh, we see that Abiathar and then also later Zadok, they are the two priests who are active in the time of uh, David and also Solomon. So here we've covered uh, up to uh, the 10th. Now, as we make a conclusion, we'll make a conclusion. You know, I, I really, uh, when I was uh, organizing the notes, I really had the most fun, I think, uh, and excitement. I was like, wow, this is so amazing, you know, uh, going over all of these notes and, and uh, uh, organizing them. I think I had the most uh, grace. Uh, you might not feel it, but... Uh, Okay, so here, as we make a conclusion, we have uh, Zadok, and then we have Abiathar. Now, Zadok and Abiathar were faithful to David, but the problem is, Zadok was faithful until the end. Faithful until the end. 
Now, Abiathar was faithful. He was faithful. But at the last moment, uh, he betrayed. And he followed Adoniah. So Absalom had already been killed. Abs Absalom. Absalom already died as he tried to make a re uh, revolt. But then Absalom had a brother, Adoniah. Adoniah. And, you know, Adoniah was a very handsome, uh, you know, tall and handsome, very good looking. Uh, and uh, at this time, it looked like everybody was siding with Adoniah, even Abiathar. Abiathar sided with Adoniah. And David looked like he was, like, you know, losing. And so uh, every uh, one sided with Adoniah. Uh, and that's where he uh, betrayed God's will. And uh, that's where he uh, fell. And so God, uh, through Solomon, uh, when Solomon became a king, Abiathar was dismissed from his priesthood. So what happened to Ab Abiathar? He was dismissed. From his uh, priesthood, dismissed. He says, "You are not a priest anymore, or in today's day, you are not a pastor anymore. You're finished." Why? Because uh, Zadok remained faithful until the end. He uh, had um, he helped Solomon go on to the th go to the throne, go to the throne. And so here we see that when Abiathar held on to Adoniah, Zadok remained faithful until the end, and he helped Solomon rise to the throne. And then God's will was with Solomon, right? Uh, but we see that Abiathar made a wrong choice, okay? And the reason why Zadok was able to be faithful until the end, because the Bible says that Zadok was Zadok was a seer. So he had discernment. So we have to discern God's will. That's what it's teaching us. We have to always discern God's will and turn off our human uh, judgments and thoughts. Let's look up a couple of passages and then uh, we'll make an a, a ending to our message today. Let's look up at a couple of passages here. Uh, first of all, Let's go to 2 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 24 and 25. Okay, now, Zadok, um, with Abiathar, helped David as they were fleeing from Absalom. So 2 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 24. Uh, let's read it together. Ready, begin. Now behold, Zadok also came, and all the Levites with him, carrying the Ark of the Covenant of God. And they set down the Ark of God, and Abiathar came up until all the people had finished passing from the city. So what this is saying it was when uh, it was fleeing from Absalom, remember he was running away barefooted? Who was at that time? Zadok and Abiathar. They both, they carried the Ark, and they said, David, you're running away, but take the Ark with you. But David said, no, uh, I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> keep the ark in Jerusalem. Okay. Yeah, keep the ark in Jerusalem, and I'll be back. You know, God's will uh, will fulfill, and, and he'll keep me safe. But at that time, Zadok and Abiathar had David. So they were faithful to David. Let's look at another passage. 2 Samuel 19, verse 11 and 12. 2 Samuel 19, verse 11 and 12. Uh, I'll read it. Then King David sent Zadok and Abiathar the priest, saying, Speak to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are you the last to bring the king back to his house? Since the word of all Israel has come to the king, even to his house. You are my brothers. You are my bone and flesh. Uh, why then should you be the last to bring back to the king? And so... Here, uh, Zadok and Abiathar helped David return back to the temple. So they, they helped David. They helped David. But now, when it was time for a new king, and David got old, Zadok helped Solomon, 
But uh, Abiathar held on to Adonia. Adonia. Uh, let's read a couple of passages, and then uh, we'll really end. Uh, so first of all, let's look at 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. And this shows you there's going to be a division here. 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. And this is important, so let us read it. Ready, begin. And he had confirmed with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar, the priest. And following Adoniah, they helped him. So who followed Adoniah? Abiathar. So they made a mistake here. Uh, he made the wrong judgment. Then let's read uh, verse 8. Ready, begin. But Zadok the priest, Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, Nathan the prophet, Shimei, Rea, and the mighty man who belonged to David were not with Adoniah. Right? So here, now Adoniah and Zadok become separated because Abiathar holds on to Adoniah and Zadok holds on to God's will, which is Solomon. Solomon. And so... If you keep reading that whole story, Solomon ends up dismissing uh, Abiathar. Let's, let's read that. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 2, 26 and 27. This will be the last one. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 26 and 27. And we'll wrap it up. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 26 and 27. Let's read it together. Ready, begin. Then to Abiathar the priest, the king said, Go to Anathoth, to your own field, for you deserve to die. But I will not put you to death at this time, because you carried the ark of the Lord God before my father David, and because you were afflicted in everything with which my father was afflicted. So Solomon dismissed Abiathar from being priest to the Lord, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord, which he had spoken concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh. And so... God pronounced judgment in, to Eli. You know, I made you an a eternal priesthood, but you broke that promise. You broke that covenant, so you're not going to be eternal priesthood, and it's going to be cut off. And so in order to fulfill that word, God pronounced judgment onto the family of Ithar and through Eli. And so to, by Abiathar, the priesthood was cut off. And then after Abiathar, only uh, the, Zad the Zadokites uh, were acknowledged by God into the uh, temple of Ezekiel. And so here we see uh, the flow uh, of uh, the will of God. And so what can we learn here? We need to always hold on to God's will. May you have discernment. And may you uh, not use your own feelings or, well, they're my family member or they're my best friend. You have to hold on to where God's will is. Hold on to that person. And when you hold on to that person, the blessings will come upon you and the blessings will not be cut off. And so I pray that Shiloh, you may be able to honor the leadership. May you be able to work together as a congregation in fulfilling God's will. And may you not work according to our own thoughts, but may you be able to hold on to God's will and perform it and execute it. And I believe that Shiloh will revive I believe your families, your businesses, your careers will revive. And all the blessings will come upon you. And I pray and bless us upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for uh, this precious word of the history of redemption series that have allowed us to understand the Bible much more clearer. Father, uh, your will was weaving in and out through the lines of Eleazar and Ithamar. Uh, but Father... Help us to always hold on to your will and to discern your will. Help us to uh, understand your heart like David did. Father, as Shiloh goes forward in our mission and task that you've given to us, may we throw away human thoughts, but may we be full of the Spirit and be full of your mind. Uh, we also pray for those who are hurting and sick. May you send your word upon all of the people so that they may be freed from darkness and from illness from emotional distress, and we thank you so much for the freedom in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's give God the glory with our applause.